Hi there, it's Chris Howard, call sign M0TCH here. Um, I recently bought a generator from Lidl, um, branded Parkside, and um, it's, uh, it's a 1200 watt in inverter generator, so I uh, thought it looked like a good, a good price, 129 pounds, so I went along and bought it, and I thought I'd uh, test it out. Now, it claims to be safe for use with sensitive equipment. I'll let you decide uh, for yourself if you feel at the end of this that is the case. Certainly from what I've seen it looks uh, it looks pretty good but uh, it's up to you if you decide to buy one and and, uh, and do that at your own risk. Uh, other caveat of course we are talking about mains voltages here, high voltages so please be careful. Um, I'll do, do a little warning when we get into the video as well about this but uh, uh, please be careful do at your own risk. Uh, and if you're not comfortable about playing rounds or, or um, working on men's equipment, then please don't do these tests yourself because uh, I don't want anybody to get hurt or uh, or, or worse. So um, on with the video. Hello, it's Chris Howard, M0TCH here. Uh, I recently bought a generator from Lidl, a men's generator, which claims to be able to be used with sensitive electronic equipment so I thought I would before doing that have a little test just see what the output looks like so I created a test rig which I'm going to test out first on, on the mains so uh, I'm just going to quickly show you what I've done now before I show you this I must point out that any anyone working on the mains anybody working at 230 volts that is dangerous so unless you're absolutely comfortable with what you're doing please do not do this at home because you could end up dead. So, uh, you know, really need to be really clear. Please don't come after me. If you've done this yourself and it goes wrong and you end up getting injured or, or worse, uh, I will not be held liable. So um, just, just read that warning. Um, so what I've done, I've basically taken a, an old uh, car battery charger, um, which I got from a car boot sale. I think it was about two pounds. This is the, this is the box that it came in. It was uh, fairly old and, and battered. And I've retrieved from that the mains transformer and I've basically chopped that out the electronics and I've put together a circuit that looks like this. So we have, it's quite simple really, I'm using it as, it as an isolating transformer so there's no mains uh, voltages that will be floating around on this side of the transformer, there'll be no connection, direct connection there. So we've got the 230 volts AC mains coming into this. Uh, part of the transformer into the primary winding and obviously that's in the UK that's 50 Hertz and then what I found with this transformer is there are two there's essentially you've got uh, the secondary has actually got a tapped the connection so you can actually tap it off halfway and that would appear to be where the battery <coughs> charger was being charged from so uh, what I've done is I've connected between uh, these two points here I've of a light bulb to give it a load so I've connected them at a 12 volt uh, automotive light bulb um, there and then I'm going to connect in my scope my silver scope here between these two points here so we can measure the output we can look at the at the frequency and, and, the, and the, the output and see how it, how it compares so that's the um, that's the schematic let me quickly show you how that looks in reality <clears throat> so this is what I got out of the uh, car battery charger this this transformer here so if we draw it that way around we have the mains we have the two this is the mains essentially so we've got the live neutral there from the 230 volt mains and that's going straight into a into one of these into a plug that goes into the, into the wall and then from on this side of the transformer we've got those three connections we've got the two essentially this is a secondary you can see it's tapped in the middle so that is only using half the secondary essentially uh, winding so that will give us a certain output and then from there I've soldered on an automotive light bulb that's a 12 volt car bulb light bulb essentially now what I'm going to do I'm just going to, just to be on the safe side and again I'll reiterate my warning the mains is dangerous please don't play with it unless you're absolutely confident and comfortable with what you're doing so just to be careful, I'm just going to put this onto this plastic box just to isolate it from the, the desk just in case there are any mains voltages there uh, floating around. And what I'll do, I'm going to put this um, bulb just into this 
glass because it's going to get hot just to keep it away and keep it keep it out of the way from me so I don't get uh, I don't get burnt just in that a little bit. So that's the that's the glass there. So if I now plug this into the mains, the light bulb should should light up and it'll be very bright. There you go, it's very bright. Um, so that's showing that we've got uh, a voltage on the secondary there. Okay, what we'll do next is we'll connect it up to the oscilloscope. So what I've got up here is my scope. So I'll just switch that on. I've already got the probe attached. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that up as I showed on the diagram earlier. So we'll connect it up to just uh, show you what I'm doing. On the secondary, we'll connect it up in parallel with that bulb. So I'll have one connection there and the other connection coming in here. Oops. The other connection coming in here. Okay, let's have a look on the oscilloscope display. What I'll do, I'll just quickly try and hide the bulb so it's not causing too much glare on the screen now. I'm going to do that or something just to cast a bit of shadow. So let's zoom into the oscilloscope screen and we'll show you what's going on. So I'm just going to adjust things. So we can see we have uh, a sine wave there, as you'd expect from the mains. I'm not too concerned about what the voltage is, although we can actually measure that. So we're going to measure here. So we can see that we have pretty much bang on 50 hertz. Let me zoom in a little bit on the measurements. There we go. So we've got around about 50 hertz, well pretty much bang on 50 hertz and we've got around about uh, an RMS value of around about 11.4 volts so that's why my 12 volt light bulb is lighting up so that's kind of what I'd expect to see when I plug it into the generator so tomorrow morning once I uh, get that out of the garage we'll plug it in and we'll do a similar test on the generator and see what sort of output and what sort of waveform we get from that okay so this is the generator in the box you can see that it's, uh, let me just zoom in a little bit so it's Parkside model number PGI 1200V2 now the specs suggest uh, this will handle maximum output of 1.2 kilowatts with a continuous rating of 1 kilowatt it suggests that it's got a digital inverter for the voltage control 230 volts 50 hertz output um, <clears throat> 4.3 amp current rating uh, etc 2, uh, 2 horsepower motor so let's get it out of the box and we'll show you what it comes with Information there. We get a tool pouch which contains a few bits, so we've got a funnel putting the oil in, and the oil will cover in a second. That's uh, an extender to go into the bottom of that. And we also get a screwdriver and a spark plug uh, wrench as well, a spanner as well, box spanner for getting into the and taking the spark plug off. Little tool kit. When you get generator itself, which is quite heavy, just take it this way. There we go. So, the first thing you notice about this is it's all plastic. Uh, casing on it, that's where the petrol goes. There's a filter, a filter there as well for when you put the fuel in to filter out any nasties.
just say again on here, inverted technology, so we'll test it out in a minute, see what the, uh, how clean the output is. Okay, on this side, we have the three pin socket for a UK plug. On off, sorry, on off switch here, under this plastic uh, cover. We've also got an eco and a max option there, not entirely sure what that means. This is like a, a grounding connection here to connect to grounds. So we've got three LEDs, three indicators, I think that's on. That's oil or low oil. I'm not sure that will mean to be honest. I'll have to look in manual. On this side, we've got the uh, full starter. This is the fuel switch, couldn't be set to off. Also got a choke as well here, so you've got run and choke. You know we start it on the choke option, then once it's going, move it across to the run option. You've also got this plate that comes off, which I'll take up and show you inside. Goes and uh, you can check the oil level. There's actually a dipstick, so you can see that's um, currently oops, dropped a bit there. That's currently on the pretty much on the high mark. Uh, so when you buy the generator, it's very important. It's a four-stroke engine that you uh, do add the oil. Now don't do what I did. So basically, it comes with the funnel with this extension. Extender here to make it easy to fill the oil. I didn't spot the extension, <laughs> so I did a silly thing. I uh, tilted the generator back to, to fill the oil and realised I'd put in too much oil, so just be careful when you use the extension, and that makes it nice and easy to put, put the oil in. It actually doesn't take very much. Um, and in fact, looking in the instructions, and by the way, if you look online, you can actually find the instructions that there's a PDF file you can find. You go to here. Lidlservice.com. You can actually uh, look at these before you buy, which is always a good idea. So just talk about uh, oil, and it takes 15 40 oil. Uh, 15 W40. It takes only well, takes a quarter of a litre, so it doesn't take much. Exhaust here again, it's all plastic. There's an exhaust in the middle, and then we're back to the front. And you do get some warnings on top about not using it inside, etc. And 95 decibel uh, output. Okay, so we'll start up the generator. So we'll go on to the choke setting, open the fuel valve. Take a few goes to get it going. going into this side of the transformer and then we're getting a low voltage from this side of the transformer so it's um, connected up to the screen
you can see, we've got quite a nice sine wave, and we've got 11.1 volts RMS, and we have pretty much bang on 50 hertz. Let me just uh, give you a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So yeah, we've got 11.1 volts RMS for this transformer, and we've got pretty much bang on. Um, 50 hertz, so actually that's uh, pretty good. As you can see, the sine wave is absolutely spot on. I think of that. So that's quite impressive. What I thought I'd also do on this side, we've also got the beacon switch. So it's still showing 11.1 volts and it's still showing the 50 volts frequency. So actually, that's quite, uh, that's quite impressive. Okay. So to summarise, um, certainly in my opinion, the, the output was slightly lower than the mains voltage. I couldn't give an exact reading, but certainly the the transformed voltage went from 11.4 volts to 11.1. So um, quite how that would, probably looking at about a 10 volt drop between the two. I didn't measure the mains voltage, so I couldn't tell you what the voltage was, but it certainly wasn't an appreciable... Uh, it certainly was probably within the uh, tolerance that's allowed for the mains. Um, certainly wasn't higher, that's the main thing, so it shouldn't cause any damage to any, any equipment. And likewise, the waveform looked... Uh, actually, to be fair, that when I looked at the went, looked back at the video and looked at the waveform that I was getting from the mains, it didn't actually look particularly nice, a nice sine wave. It looks a little bit of a... more of a... Um, wasn't quite as smooth or quite as round as a sine wave and that in fact the output from the generator actually looked slightly smoother which was uh, surprising um, and it certainly was absolutely bang on 50 hertz so I personally would be quite happy to put anything onto that generator um, it probably makes sense to to get the generator running first before you connect anything and likewise when you're uh, shutting down it's worth probably unplugging anything sensitive before turn the generator off because you might find there are as the gen as the engine is shutting down or starting up there may be some spurious voltages hanging around there so uh, that's uh, certainly worth bearing in mind but again it's you know clearly you need to assess for yourself um, how suitable this is for for use on equipment but certainly uh, my, my view is that I'm actually quite impressed it's a really good price um, I got mine in June 2017. I've actually looked today and I can't see any more for sale at Lidl. They tend to do offers and they intend to run, they intend to buy stock and then once they've run out, they've run out. I suspect this will come back into stock though. And in fact, looking on Google, it looks like they've been, there's been various versions of parks, so I generated some Lidl. And also looking on, e on eBay, there are also people selling them there as well. Um, so I'm sure you can get hold of one if you want to. Um, it may be just a case of hanging around until Lidl get them back in stock. Uh, if you want one, so uh, but certainly uh, gets a thumbs up from me. So uh, hope that was useful.